was on it, that's why. This play's about time and George Cohan. He's our hero. We're on his side. So to balance the scale, we tell it with a cast German enough never to have seen him perform. And in some cases... George who? Never to have even heard of him. <laughs> Hard to believe? Try this simple test. Ask your own kids when you get home tonight, huh? And while you're at it, ask them about John Barrymore and Wendell Wilkie and the Little Flower and Toots and Cat's Bar and Mellow Rose and the NRA. Ask them about Lamont Cranston. Never heard of him. Surprised? Don't be. There's been one of those floods the earth comes up with every 20 years or so. All the old landmarks have tumbled, and except for the odd footprint, the sand is clear. Look for me, kid, says Georgie. I'm still there. Well, that's what we're going to do tonight, Georgie. Look for you. Say, Zane, do we have some more light? Because this is George Cohan's life story, we tell it where he lived it. On a stage, like this one. Not much, is it? Or everything, for that matter. I guess it all depends on how you look at it. Well, that's the end of our prologue. We're ready. We hope you're ready. <coughs> Georgie was never anything but... Beginning with his first stage in Providence, Rhode Island, July 4th, 1878. The truth was, George was born the day before, but it pleased him to be the Independence Day his birthday, and so July 4th it was. Heightened reality, they call it. The truth was up for the stage. But that's where he lived it, how he lived it, and how we tell it. July 4th, 1878, George Michael Cohen is born. <laughs> We'll get stuff up here as packed in this yard for the dedication in here. I'm going to tell my mom you're in your house. Oh, I think this is what the crazy sexual husband of her. Down at the theater, you told them she wouldn't deliver till tomorrow. Well, don't just stand there saying that someone didn't give her the, the bomb throws. It's all right, Mrs. Cohen. Come in. <laughs>
before I can carry him on to me tonight. Look, we might as well teach him how to dance while he's learning to walk. It'll save time. <laughs> oh, my God, he's dancing. Go on, George. That's a good boy. This time, try and move out on the second chorus and add your clips. Absolutely not. That boy's only ten years old, and I have no intention of allowing him to... All right, all right. Long hands for George, but only when he comes on to the encore with Josie. Who do you think made it up? Little Georgie, of course. Not bad for a 15-year-old kid, is it? Go on, Nellie, try putting this time. Well, sure he hasn't had much of an education, but what kid's seen as much of this country as he has? That's an education too, you know. Why, just look at all the towns we played. Farewell, my hearty 
Well, I promise you, we'll have more people around us than we know what to do with. I hope so, George. I certainly hope so. You understand, don't you, Josie? It's like I'm, I'm running. There's a long train going by me, and I'm running after it. It's night. I can see people laughing inside. And the light shines through the windows onto the brass railings outside the doors. I know if I can once, just once touch those railings, I can get on. For some crazy reason, you'll be there, and Mom and Pop, too. All of us together, Josie, always. You'll get on, George, I know you will. The train starts and stops, and that's why we need people to be there when it's time to get off, because nothing's always George. I am, and you know why? Glad playing it their way from now on. Humble's what they want, that humble they're gonna get. Fourteen carat solid brass Rhode Island Irish humble, and don't look for better, cause there ain't none. Bob Pop, it's the new me. That's right, no Bob Malcolm's no more. So feast your eyes on the new Georgie. Thoughtful, modest, quiet, unassuming, and most of all, considerate of other people at all times. <coughs> Unless, of course, you have to run into fat heads like Albie. <coughs> you know you sat there, Mom, not a smile on him. Oh, but don't you worry, Pop. We'll play New York. Now, why shouldn't we? We've got everything. Brains, talent, Park, latest act in the business, and me, little Georgie himself. I like the new George. That's the new one, and I don't miss the old one. <laughs> Mom, Pop, you're not letting them get you down, are you? Okay, okay, so while we didn't hire us, we don't matter for Molly 20 bucks for the rent. A couple of bad breaks like that aren't going to get us down, are they? You know what I want, Pop? I want the four of us to walk out of this year like we own the world. I say walk. No, I meant march. No, stride. Shoulders back, head high, chin up. Follow me. There he goes on his back.
Walking, dancing, 
Uh, no, I'm the math. Great, we'll have to sit down and talk about it sometime. Ben? Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Ben? Yes, Mr. Cohen. Ben, this is a rehearsal. Get up all the girls out here. We've got to go over push cart. Oh, well, Mr. Cohen, yeah, we didn't get any blue barber feet. Okay, then face them. All right, girls, get out. Thank <laughs> you. 
this is 35 years now. How do you know? Know what, George? Good. Snap your claws. Throw a friend out there. Still true no matter what. How do you know? It's really good. It's hard to explain, son, but, well, there is something that happens. Suddenly that whole stage is brighter. You know, those lights are the same as your sediment rehearsal. But suddenly they're brighter and stronger. And the orchestra was playing louder and faster and... Well, George, that whole stage just shines. Don't worry, son. When it happens, you'll know. Let's go. We're on. <laughs> Say hello to dear old Coney Isle, if there is a chance to be. When you're at the Waldorf, have a smile and charge it up to me. Mention my name every place you go, as round the town you roam. Wish you'd call on my gal, now remember, old pal. When you get back home, if I regard to Broadway, remember me to Herald Square. Tell all the gang at 42nd Street that I will soon be there. Whisper of how I'm yearning to mingle with the old time prom. upon a foreign shore. When the good ship's just about to start for old New York once more. With tear dim eye, they say goodbye, their friends without a doubt. When the man on the pier shouts, let him clear as the
know what else? He was right. Old Georgie's up there now. Climbed on board and picked a window seat. Now I got my eye on a private car. Why not? Check the league I'm batting with. The geezer with a roll of bills is none other than the mayor of this fair city, Norbert T. Hatcher himself. Pilot crews swimming around and include Chief Alderman Haley. Very economical fellow. Never buys a whole pair of gloves. Doesn't have to. One hand's always in somebody else's pocket. <laughs> That's the honor of T.J. Anspatcher wooshing the cigar. Very distinguished gentleman. Only living U.S. justice still on parole. <laughs> and last but not least is our very own congressman, W.F. Burkhardt Jr., running for his sixth straight term on the uh, prohibition <laughs> ticket. <laughs> Why are they here? To add a little glitter to my latest enterprise. It's going to be a Broadway producer and give Zigfield and Froman a run for their money. Got me Sam H. Harris for a partner. And from now on, Cohan presents Cohan. Splendid well, little setup you get here, Mr. Cohan. Now what I want to know is when can we expect the first Cohan here in the Give us a break, Your Honor. We just got together. As a matter of fact, I thought we might sit in this seat now and just do the face jump and show, and that's all. I've always understood that Mrs. Templeton was one of the biggest stars on Broadway, Mr. Cohan. And she'll be twice as big when we've been through with her, won't she, Sam? Big Templeton. Cohan now, Mrs. Templeton, is really doing this. Show. Really doing it? Why, she's been hounding us all week for the contract. All telegrams. She's even got her old lady waiting outside right now. Hi, Mrs. Templeton. Well, we haven't got the name of the show just yet, but we figure we ought to open by, uh, last week in December. Huh? That's right. Last week in December with the biggest hit of Faye's career. Sam, you're gonna be all right. Hey, how'd you like to hear one of the first songs we sent over to Faye today? Get a load of this. <coughs>
everything I've ever written. Little Nellie Kelly, she's going to rehearsal next week. It's the story of a cop with his beautiful daughter.
matter? Sam? It's Jerry, George. Papa! He's dead. Agnes just called from the hospital. Nellie's with her. George, if there's anything I can do, my car's outside. <laughs>
Josie is sneaking into my room and we work on dance routines. We wouldn't get to sleep until dawn. All the summers of the old days are gone already. Josie, Dad, or Cohen. Broadway's the only thing that's left. And if you change that, Hank, you change it without me. Easy, George. We don't have to make Now's as good a time as now's as good a time as any Sam. Radicals? Bolsheviks, that's not my Broadway, and I don't want any part of it. They're not radicals and Bolsheviks, and you know it, George. Sam's right. Wait a bit. Stay on the sidelines. Agnes, I'm George. What do I know about sidelines? Okay, Hank, you got a fight on your hands. Throw me. And I'm warning you, if it's your Broadway that wins, there'll be a Broadway without Cohan. George. Shit, yeah, I don't intend to lose. I've been giving this pretty what it wants for years now, and it's not going to like doing without me. I'm not only on that train, I own it. I am the man who owns Broadway. That's what the daily papers say. The girls have turned away, but I'm too mad to me. We go to see the play or not the play. They say he is the man who owns Broadway. The break is break, the local people spin on Broadway. Back in this basket. Uh, I thought you might, dear. I thought you 
my ear. Well, I might as well let you know about a new policy in this family, kid. From now on, I examine all trash baskets both here and at home to find out if anything valuable has been thrown out by mistake. And in case I do happen to find something valuable, you can just tell your pal, Mr. Sam, first class special delivery Harris, that my terms will not only be high, but astronomical. That I'm only considering this because if I don't get back on a stage, I'll go nuts, Angus. Oh, you shouldn't have let me retire. The working conditions are brutal. <laughs> what retired people need is, is a union. <laughs> Understand. My name's Cohen. 
I've been on stage something like 10,000 times. I've put on half a hundred shows and written half a hundred more. And if I stick my art, it's because this show needs it. In fact, a good overall in my knee would be the best thing that could happen to this script. What's that? A new lyric, sir. I was asked to give it to you in the place of the one you changed yesterday. Your bad lyric is insulting. Al Smith happens to be a good friend of mine, and I don't feel like saying those things about him. Sure, what I put in may not be smart, but it's worked for years, damn it. I don't need some pumpkin to These are you. the director's notes, Mr. Cohen, not mine. And maybe what's worked for years is what he wants in this show. The way you were taught was great first time that this is 1937, and things have changed. And excuse me for saying this, sir, but if you don't realize that, maybe you shouldn't have come back. <coughs> now, here's the new lyric we want you to learn. If you can manage it, sir, they appreciate your having it by tomorrow. Look, if you like this, thing, go over with you. No. Then if you don't mind, I'll be going along. Try to wait, have an early call. <coughs> you sure you don't want to stay? No, that's okay, kid. I got a little overheated on that last stand in the burn. You don't want to go outside so I can down. All right, Mr. Cohen. See you in the morning. Good morning.
friendship, mother met you, my sister met you, that's what my self-defense does not change. 